NGRX Component Store is a library for managing local component state reactively. This video gives you an overview of the main concepts of Component Store and shows you how to get started. This example shows you how to list, how to create, how to update, and how to delete products and manage state using Component Store. To get started, install the NGRX Component Store package. Here I use ng-add at ngrx slash component store to install the package. Answer yes to install the latest version and it will add it to your package JSON dependencies. So let's jump into the code. To create the product store in the products folder, I'm going to create a new file called products.store.ts. First, we'll create an interface for the state. So we'll export an interface called products state. And we'll have two properties. One property for collection will be the array of products. The second property would be the current product ID, which will be a string or null value. Next, we'll define our initial state. So we have initial state, which will match the product state. And we'll set the collection to an empty array and the current product ID set to null. Next, we'll create the class that uses the component store. So we'll bring in the injectable decorator and export the class named products store that extends component store and uses the products state interface. We'll add the constructor and call the super method with the initial state to eagerly set the state for the product store. You can also set the initial state lazily after the product store has been created, but we use it eagerly here. Next, we'll add methods for reading and updating the store. The first one will be to add a product. So we'll call it, add a method called add product that takes a product. And one of the methods on the component store that the product store gets when it's extended is the set state method. The set state method allows you to override every property on the store in a couple of ways. You can do this by overriding every property manually, such as we did with the initial state. And you can also use a callback function if you need to only override certain properties. So we're gonna use the callback function here. So we're gonna return new object, spread the existing state, and update the collection. Copy the current items in the collection into the new array and add the new product. We want to also want to add a method to select a product. And this is going to use one of the other methods on the component store. So create a method called select product. We have product ID and uses a string. And this will use the patch state method. The patch state method allows you to only override the properties that you want to override, and it will take the existing state and copy those, those properties over along with the object you passed in. So in this case, we only want to set the current product ID to the product ID that's passed in. These two ways to update the state were created by manually creating methods. We also have another method on the store that will create these methods for you to update the store. And that's called the updater. So we're going to add another method on the store called update product. And this is going to use the updater function. Now the updater function is similar to the 
set state callback and where you pass in the existing state or it receives the existing state as an argument and takes an argument that's passed in and uses a callback, what you return will update the store. So we're going to return a new object again. We're going to copy the existing state into the store and update the collection. And this time, since we want, only want to update one product at a time, we're going to take the existing state collection and map it into a new array. And we're going to say if the product ID matches the product ID that we pass in, then we return the new product. Otherwise, we return the existing product. Now we're able to use the update product as a method on the component store. Like the update product, we'll create a delete product method that uses an updater and takes in the product state and the product ID as we define as arguments to this method. We return a new state, copy the existing properties from the state over, and modify the collection. For this collection, we're going to use the filter method where the product that we want to filter out matches by ID. So if the product ID matches the product ID filtered in, or passed in, we're going to return false. Otherwise, we'll return true so that the item isn't filtered out. Now we have methods to select the product, add, update, and delete the product. Next, we want to create ways to read products, read properties from the store in our component store. And we can do those with selectors. As I mentioned before, a component store has methods to make selectors and reading data from the store more convenient. So we're going to create a few selectors here, one for products. This is going to get every product, the collection of products from the store. I'm going to use the select method. And this gives you the state object and lets you, you pick properties off the state. So we have one for products. We're going to create another selector for current product ID chooses to select again, select state.currentProductID. We also want to have a selector for current product. In this case, we're going to use the select method again, but we're going to pass the current, the products and the current product ID to create a new selector that's based off those two values. So we have the products and the current product ID. And the last argument is the projector function. And this will give us the products and the ID. And we will return products.find. And we'll use the product and say that the product ID matches the ID that's passed in. That way, when we subscribe to the current product, whenever one of those other two values changes, it will automatically update the current product's observable stream. Now that our component store has the methods that we need for our component, we can go over to the component and use the component store inside the products component. First, we'll define the providers and import the products store into the component. Now this will tie the product store to the life cycle of the component. So when the product's component is destroyed, the component store will be destroyed along with it. We'll add the constructor and import the, add the product store to the constructor of the component. And now we can use this product store in the component itself. We'll define properties in the component 
that use the product store such as products and the current product from the product store I'll go in and add some list of products along with some methods that call methods on the products component and then we'll use those methods with our component store. The first one is the on add. So on the on add, we'll use the product store add product method. And we'll pass in an object to create the product. Now this product takes an ID, which we've already defined, a name, and we'll just use product in the name and also a description and we'll just use description along with the ID and we'll go back and use the ID here also for updating a product we'll use the product store again and we'll update a product and we'll copy the current product into the existing object and we'll just overwrite, update the description for this product. For selecting a product, we'll use the product store select product method. And on clear, for the clear method, we'll pass in the use the product store again. and use the select product method again and use a null value. So we'll go back and adjust the select product to take a string or null. And now we can pass that in successfully. Lastly, we have the on delete. So use the product store and delete product and we'll pass in the product ID. We'll save our changes. And now we can see that if we add products, we can select the product we can update a product and delete products from the store. And we can clear the selected product. Now, if we go back to the home route and back to the products route, we can see that our products list is empty because the product store was destroyed and recreated every time we visit this component. And that's an overview of reading, writing, and updating data in NGRX component store. In another video, I'll show you how to manage side effects. Also, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, as that really helps me out. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.